spoken. Hello. Um, hello and welcome. It is Saturday, the 13th of March. Wow, time has really flown. Is it really the 13th of March? Bless. All right. Well, um, today I thought I would join you guys for a live stream. Um, usually I do them every Saturday on Patreon. So this is kind of something that I usually do. Um, so last week I did a fun little doodle where I combined two references and together into one. Um, I did that last week and I'll show you the outcome if you weren't able to see it. And it was this cool cat. Um, she is... <laughs> Sorry, now I'm nervous that my thing isn't working. What is a live stream without a little bit of technical difficulty? Am I right? Oh, okay, we're good. Okay, so um, last week I did a live where I took the characters. Uh, there was this girl in a Renaissance dress and then this black cat and I put them together and I made this reference, or made this image. <laughs> Sorry, can you tell I'm tired? And um, for this one, we're gonna take the two references below me the elf guy, well, type archer, I guess, um, that could easily be made into an elf character, and then the calico witch, or calico cat, to my um, other side. And, I don't know, I thought combining them would be fun. This cat's got some green eyes, um, some orange in the fur. I thought you could um, help me pick some colors for it as well. So we'll be able to do that. Um, it's just a lot of green opposite of last time. That's okay. Uh, sometimes we just wanna change our mind. And although I did really love these colors, um, we're probably not gonna use them. We're gonna just use something similar to our reference image on the right below me. Okay. So, by the way, I'm using watercolor paper, if you're not familiar. Um, and watercolor paper just is helpful when working in something that's a bit more inky or watery, like a la watercolor, obviously, but also markers can help do that as well. Um, so I guess something that would be good to do right now is to zoom in on our body shape. I'm gonna start on the body shape and then I'm gonna work and see what proportions look well with the head. Um, it's just not, I guess, enough to just plop the head onto the character sometimes. Um, I do that a lot, but it sometimes just doesn't work. So we have to just zoom in on our reference on our body. I like working on the body first. Because the head is just the fun part, the like, most exciting part. And sometimes I just don't want to... I don't want to do that. I want to do something different. Okay. So, we have our head about... Let's map out. Let's map out the big shapes. So... You can kind of just like do a little bit of a... And I think it would probably work better if the pants were a little bit... Maybe we'll figure out the trunk of the body and then the head will come. So I mapped out the edges of my paper because I want to know what, uh, what my areas are. I don't want to go outside of the paper while I'm doing my live, which would probably be genuinely annoying. But yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm drawing, but you can't see me. That'd be it. So, let's see. I feel like it's gonna come out further than if this is the torso. And we have our torso, our arm, our bow. I just like to keep with the loose lines. And we're seeing a shape. So there's this line that's the bow that comes down 
and there's a bit of actually a space so there's genuine space between the bow and the leg um, and we're just sketching in red because I sketched in red last time and it was actually really quite fun I enjoyed it I didn't think I would enjoy sketching in red since um, the Colerase one does leave a bit of uh, marks but I guess for this case it doesn't really matter okay so we have and then we also have this like garment that comes out so off the bat I am not really liking how far away it is I think probably I would like to bring all of these closer. So what we're going to do is we're going to just bring it closer in. Which means that very little of the pants will be showing and it will be mostly this top area. But uh, we still have some areas like the shirt and the bow. It's just kind of sometimes when something is too far away, it's just less enjoyable, less likable to do. So I think that's why it would just be more fun to bring out more of the shape so that it fills more space on the page and is more dynamic. And then the crossbow can come out here. The sleeve can kind of come out here. So I changed my mind. Sorry. It would have just been better for me to not change my mind and just go from the beginning and be like, hey, I should probably crop this a bit more, but it's fine. And by the way, when I was uh, grabbing this image, this was not tilted. I actually tilted him on purpose because I thought it would be more interesting to be tilted. Um, just giving it like, kind of like a line, line of action that isn't straight up and down, because that would be pretty, I don't know. I don't think that would be very dynamic and not enjoyable to look at. Okay, so we're going with our face, just like last time, going with our head. I'm thinking it'll probably be a bit feel more out. Okay. And right off the bat, I'm gonna push the shoulder down. I'm gonna move the shoulder up um, because I think that would just make more sense. Um, I'm going to, we have our torso, we have our leg coming out. Okay. Arm comes down. And we're probably going to have some ears up here. Probably. That doesn't make more sense. And we're probably gonna have a, so the pack is not at the arm, but kind of below the arm, maybe about this much down the shoulder, his pack with his bows in it, that comes out to the side. And then we also have a just bow in general, since its hand has come down. There's one line here, which is the actual bow. And then there's the big bow line which we could dramatize and make it bigger. Oh, okay, it's going over his. It's a bit shorter, because we're giving a little bit of perspective here, so it won't be too far off. And arm comes down. And it's gonna hold the arrow. Yeah, I think that'll be that maybe makes sense. Maybe it's too short. No, because I just... <laughs> maybe it doesn't make sense. Okay. Um... Alright. Let's see if we've done well. Um... Our line of action is about... It's like a diagonal shape. So we have our diagonal shape and we still need to do the rest. I've kind of just outlined rough sketches. Um, I just like 
doing that. This might be a little too down, but we'll remedy that. Um, I have an eraser at the other side, so that'll be helpful. Okay. And I believe the sleeve has just come out, perhaps in wind motion, but I've made it come out actually. I think that would just be way better. Um, and then this sleeve, I think I'm gonna decide to make it also come out, kind of like, but it has a little bit of shape to it. And then the pants kind of extend down. We have another, it's kind of like a tunic. And I think that thing that's coming down is his belt. I think I was like, is that part of the pants? But no, that line of like those little dots down there are actually part of his belt. Okay. Why did I get confused? Confusion is normal. <laughs> okay. So we're going to keep the neck. We're just going to go for... Okay. Let's see. It is a little too down. Perhaps it'll make sense when I am working on it. If it doesn't, I can extend it. I just wanted to create a more interesting kind of shoulder angle as though he was like actually pulling down. Anyhow, um, I'm just, okay, so he has a sleeve that comes down here, and then his hand extends further, kind of in a bit of a, a Muppet shape. So there's a bunch of fingers that come kind of down diagonally, and then his uh, pointer finger comes out. And then the thumb is on the other side of the bow. So, um... We're just going to continue that down so that it's not visible. And the feathers on the arrow. The feathers on the arrow are being gripped with the line. There's like the, the bow line that we're working on. Maybe I'll move this a little over. So I hope you guys are all doing well, staying safe, um, eating all right. I've recently just been eating the most vegetarian stuff because of health reasons. <laughs> I had too many um, really good snacks, was what I'm trying to say. I think I overindulged. I got a little too um, comfortable eating Salty foods, sodium filled foods. So it's my mistake. So just been eating potatoes, bananas, trying to keep everything low sodium, even though all the good things are sodium laden. All the good things. When has there ever been a food, like a nice savory food that hasn't had a good amount of salt in it at a restaurant? Never. Okay, so we have a really nice, fun maple leaf shape, um, but he's kind of looking a little flat, so I'm thinking it's probably the angle of the, the belt, which is just right across his chest, which doesn't make any sense. So this loops down, and it loops. It comes around, so we have a little bit of a shape, and there's also not as much shading, so if I were to shade kind of this area, it would bring it a little bit more, pop through. Um, but so far I wanna, you know, keep things in the sketch phase because I'm trying to make it interesting and 
I'm all parts believable, I guess. Okay, and then it comes down. So this kind of, what is this? Actually, I believe this is probably for the pack. So the pack behind him, where it has all his bows. So the bows come up and they're all in these little shapes, small shapes. Okay. And I'm just going to add some movement leaves as a way to indicate some maybe movement, perhaps. Uh, probably there's going to be like grass at the bottom too. But yeah, it's kind of coming together. Okay. Um, we have our... Yeah, I think we have our outfits. There's not a lot of space. Maybe I made this too far out. Nope, I don't think so. I think it's just a little further. Okay. Um, let's see. This comes down, we have a poofy sleeve, we have a thin sleeve, and then we have a hand coming through, grabbing the arrows in a kind of tilted, tilted hand position. It is a bit dark under the hand, and there's like a maple leaf pattern on the front. I need to sharpen my, my pencil. Why is she so dull? Okay. Good. I just wanted it to focus a little more. So, yeah. I don't have much to much to mention other than been going steadily I guess I already finished my the witch and the frog uh, page so I'm now working on the hug or big hug um, I'm torn between big hug hug or family I don't know if <laughs> either of those titles work um, we'll see okay so are all let's see these creases go down they follow the line of kind of gravity and then the hand shape the knuckle as well as the kind of front finger so it's kind of grasped very it looks uncomfortable but the arrow is being grasped. So that is the general, just generic shape of it. I haven't done a very perfect shape. There's also pattern on this individual's robes. Um, it looks like a bit of either their leaves or it just looks like, like a sea foam pattern. My eyes are not well acquainted with what type of pattern it is yet. Um, probably the more I look at it, the more I'll figure it out. But so far, if any of y'all would like to tell me in the chat, much appreciated. I have no idea what kind of pattern this is. Never seen such a thing. Okay. Excuse me. And 
this is probably where his knee kind of comes out so this will probably be a knee, a knee but it's a little bit too much in the darkness that I can't really make it out so we're just gonna have to go with this belt that's around his waist that I genuinely can't tell <coughs> at all This is the this one, and I think, let's see, are we, are we at a good point to, are we at a good point to move forward? Let's see, I think so. I think we are. Okay. And I know there's no puff, but basically I'm just following the pattern. There is a... Um, a bit of a jutting out of fabric that ends up looking like an extra sleeve up here, but it's not. It's just the puff of the sleeve coming up. Okay, and then he also has this kind of neckline that is... I love it. It's a fun neckline, and I added an extra layer because I thought it would just be more interesting. <laughs> okay, now I think is the point where I'm going to quickly do these arrows. And then there's a, it's a deep container. So that'll be how it is. And other than that, I don't think there's anything from the body that we need to work on. I did pull all of these little tiny little leaves right here um, because I thought that would be fun and dynamic. So I did it on the other side, on this side too. And there's going to be some leaves at the bottom just to give a nice vibe. A trick that I learned um, just by looking at other artists was making the something like, the bottom half of the character is darker than the top half of the character. Also, the bottom half needs to not be a 90 degree angle. So the shape has to kind of be either curved so that it's just enjoyable for the eye. If it's just one object in space like this with nothing at the bottom, nothing as the foundation, then it doesn't look as interesting from what I've heard. I feel like I've said this a lot, but it's okay. All right, so we're gonna go to the face. Wow, isn't he the cutest little guy you've ever seen with the little feet? Oh, I love it when they do this. Bless them, okay. So we're gonna go for a face. So genuinely in our other reference, he was looking in that direction. This is kind of same direction that the cat is looking at which is a little bit to the like left a little bit to his left so he's kind of looking to his left and then our reference photo he's also looking to the left they're both looking to the left i don't know what they're looking at probably a, a bird that they're going to eat so we're just gonna do the same way so we're gonna be looking to the left and uh i'm gonna basically start on a nice round face because our little guy has a nice round face so i'm gonna just extend this part of the face and i have a feeling that it'll probably look better i was kind of thinking of an angular face but given how soft our general like our sleeves and um the kind of outfit is i'm definitely leaning towards a more soft um a soft small boy aesthetic don't know if they have any tags on that, but uh, this is usually my cat is giving me soft boy aesthetic all the time. <laughs> my cat PC, oh my God, he's given me so many problems lately. Should I tell you all? <laughs> so two, maybe three weeks ago, he had gotten very sick, extremely sick. And I think it was because he had eaten something very unpleasant and it probably didn't suit him. It didn't suit anything. Uh, so then he, he got terribly sick. He was vomiting and now he's had to get medicines, right? I feel like I've told you guys 
But yes, he has had to eat medicine and try to be a good boy. And he's mostly a good boy until the medicine comes out and then good boy vibes out. Just bad boy, bad boy vibes. So my cat is very upset with me. Does not like me right now. Don't know what to do about that. Okay. And we're just gonna fix this other side too with this, these little face puffs. All right, and then we have a chin right about here, I think. So I'm kind of just trying to map it out the best I can. And if this doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I'm thinking it might work. If not, I'll just extend the, the neck a little more so it'll have a bit of a, a thicker neck, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it'll make sense. Okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna grab the, where the eyes are, I think. So the eyes are gonna be about here. The nose is gonna be about, um, maybe a little further down, maybe about here, which will then kind of extend out into the mouth. Why did the nose get so small? Okay. So this is the chin. Yeah, I think the nose will be here and then the mouth will be not far behind. Okay. So I'm gonna try and see if I can The face is the part that gets- oh! Those are my kitty cats. We have a little face and we also have it comes up to the eyes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's my cat. Okay, we have our eye, and we also have a couple of brow whiskers and cheek whiskers right there. And then we're gonna work on the other one. two eyes and we have the little eyebrow whiskers and then we have a little face whiskers there we go we have our little guy not very little but He's out hunting. He's out trying to trying to get some num nums. All right. And I think if we're trying to think of the light, I think most of the light will probably be coming from this side. So the light will come from here. It'll probably hit his cheek and then it's very soft lighting too. It's not really harsh, but we're going to kind of make it a little bit so, so that's the, um, 
that's the part that I'm not looking forward to doing. But yeah, we kind of have him all sketched out. I'm gonna do a couple of last minute fixings um, of our character, of our guy. And then we're just gonna move on to line work and then we're gonna pick colors and I'm just gonna put all the colors kind of here so that you can see them, just like my last one. But yeah. Anyhow, I uh, don't really have anything crazy to say today or whatever's going on. Um, I had a really amazing dream that I ate a bunch of seafood. That was really nice and fun. Um, so there's this restaurant called The Boiling Crab and I ate there a while ago, a long time ago actually, before the pandemic happened. And they had all these kind of like just tons of seafood. And their gimmick was that you'd come over, you'd sit at the table, and then they'd pour out like it was like a bucket onto your table, all of the seafood. And then you'd eat the seafood and you'd eat it with your hands. <laughs> now, I wouldn't say, I was very much like shocked because I had never done that. Of course I'd shared food with people. That's a given. Um, I've never had the inclination to not um, share food. Oh, does it look strange? Oh, the, the fingers do. So I've always been sharing food with people, but I've never done it to the point where the, all the food is like basically dumped <laughs> onto the table. And that was really interesting. And overall, it was it was very delicious. It was a very delicious experience. I'm really glad I had it. Uh, definitely very unique, and I had a dream about it. <laughs> I was craving it so badly. I was thinking, oh, I'm just gonna dream of all the fish I can eat. And it happened. <laughs> Some people say you need to manifest the life you want to live, and maybe I'm just manifesting fish and shrimp and I think what I most liked were the marinated potatoes. I've never had a potato let me down before, so most of my expectations for potatoes are, are pretty are pretty high and, and pretty consistent. I've never been disappointed by a potato, never betrayed by a potato. Potatoes never hurt me, so that's where we're going here. So yeah, there are spiced potatoes that have been marinated in the sauce. I'm sorry, I'm just making you guys hungry. Um, what do we got? Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. The I think I'm just gonna use buttons this time. I'm just making more sense. Okay. And I think we have we have everything he's been all about. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna call him. Frederick. Frederick the archer. And he'll be um, chilling with my homegirl Beatrice on the other side, the Renaissance girl. Okay, um, I think, I don't think there's anything else I'm genuinely missing here. I've looked at all of the um, kind of patterns of where the, the creases are going of the arms, where everything is lining up. I'm not really finding anything that I'm having issue with. Um, so I think I'm just gonna do the line work and then we're gonna try and figure out a pattern. Perhaps I'll use a diamond pattern because last time I used a heart pattern, it didn't take me too long, but I think this time I'll just end up using a diamond pattern. Maybe that's just how the cookie crumbles. Okay, so for lining, I'm going to be using a Sakura Pigma Micron in the 03. Uh, this is because I used to work in the thinnest types of these and it just never worked out. So I've, I feel like a lot of the line work 
um, that I do is in the 03 now, not in the 005. Um, that was a little too thin. So I'm gonna get some water and I'm gonna put the break button for maybe like a minute. Um, I'm gonna go grab some water, take a break, get some water, and we'll just do the line work. Um, if you don't have a liner, go grab a liner. And yeah, I'll be back in like a minute. Okay, so <clears throat> I had to grab a lozenge while I was drinking water because um, maybe it's the heater last night, but my throat ended up feeling very lousy. So we're just gonna work with this way. What I'm gonna do now is that I'm just gonna line this guy and line all the little pieces and Use my reference if I end up feeling like this line isn't good enough or that I'm just not feeling good about that certain area. I'll go back and look at the reference, which I've pulled up right here, of the, um, the, wait, I'm realizing I'm missing something. Oh. <laughs> I moved that. I didn't mean to move that. Okay. So what I wanted to do was that I wanted to show you what I missed. I missed the, um, I missed these little facial markings that he has. There we go. All fixed. And they're not necessarily even. And there's like one, it's like the orange kind of wraps around the entire facial mark. It's very cute. Okay. So there we go. I think, mm, I definitely realized what else I'm missing. A tail, right? Okay, I'm gonna add one. Maybe like, I'm gonna start. So the tail kind of starts around here, kind of like low back. And then it'll probably go, yeah. How's that? But it'll be much thinner. Okay, we'll pull this soft shape. And because there's some calico, I'm just gonna add some little, kind of like double markings. And that's where the tail's gonna be. It might be a little long, but I don't know why it just makes more sense. We need a tail, right? Okay, so now that we've gotten most of the issues out of the way, um, we're gonna do the line work <laughs> that I promised. Okay, oh, my sleeve not getting in the way. This is the part where I'm not really a huge fan of, but we're just gonna keep it. Keep it there. Line work 
doesn't really take too much um, thinking at least when you get to this point. I think it's probably because most of the stuff is already there. Most of your sketch is already there. But uh, I think after the first go about, then you kind of make certain lines thicker, make certain lines thinner, and then that's more of the point where you're thinking a lot about what's going on. Well, my maple leaf ended up looking very strange, but it's okay. <laughs> No harm, no foul. I don't know why this pen is like giving me problems. It's not going on as dark as I thought it would. I'm just kind of going back on the face. I wonder if it's because when the red goes on too thickly, um, the liner doesn't go properly on top of it. And I wonder if that's the reason why I've been having a hard time with the liner. Maybe. Okay, there's like another, <clears throat> there's like an inner line up here. And the ear comes down. There's like little ear tufts on the top. Okay, two little whiskers, and we have some of the pattern, the little face pattern. He's determined. He will get the He will get the food, he will get the sustenance, it will happen. There we go. And I think we're gonna go back here. Yeah. Uh, 
have the puff sleeve. We have the... So we have most of the cat uh, face done. Um, so we're just gonna focus back on the outfit that he has going on. Um, I'm gonna focus on these pleats here. He also had like a belt too. So there's like a belt and an underbelt, some sort of thing. Okay. And we're just gonna use little soft buttons to indicate the top part. And I like doing that because it looks nice, that's all. <laughs> no other specified meaning. We have a knuckle that has an interesting grip on it because it's gripping this. Okay, we have these and there we go. And it's gonna go down past the finger and then the string probably comes across. Okay, so the string of the bow comes across and gets to the other side. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> It's not as, um, I guess the dimensions are probably not as accurate as, as it would be, but we're looking for fantasy, not accuracy, right? <laughs> okay, I think this tail comes here, but it's like, okay, maybe that doesn't make sense. I hope you all are doing well um, in terms of everything that's going on. This week has just been really, really tiring for me for some reason. Just a lot of stuff to do. Ugh. Anyhow, other than that, nothing else really on the tip of, on the top of my mind, I guess. This kitty cat, he's looking pretty cute, at least I think so. And I've just basically taken the, of where the lines are and just kind of kept them there. Okay, don't want to run interference with any grass. This is probably a lot more than I thought it would be, but it's okay. Okay, I think it's... Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and I think the last one is the... The bow, right? All of the bows that are in the in the container that is strapped to his back. So We have it some terribly drawn bows um, <laughs> I don't want to take too long so I guess this is why I'm 
going for this type of a deal. And I think because of everything, we can kind of add these darker areas. So kind of where the collar sits in the armpit area, kind of this is the area. As well as where everything kind of pools now. So it can pool here too. So I'm just adding some dramatic, like extra line work on the edges. And I bet that can probably come after a little bit of pulling the ink or the sketch off because some of this, some of these pencil marks are just not helpful right now. <laughs> They're a hindrance. Also just use the the lightness of one of these erasers these erasers are pretty good too I think I just got mine from Blick art store online they had like a bunch that came in a pack and I just did it that way all right so I was right I did use too much of this liner well that's fine My eraser fell. Ugh. Okay. So more racing, more lining. This inking part. What are you guys up to? I'm not up to anything. <laughs> I'm not up to anything, not doing anything. I guess this is the consequence of, of the quarantine. If I were to create a story about this cat, it would probably be about how he's trying to search for the best, um, best way to hunt or the best way, like a very like prescriptive, um, all other options are unnecessary and void. Probably that kind of thing. It'd probably be that kind of story with a lot of like arguments. <laughs> He'd probably be a little strict. I don't know. For my most recent like Witch and the Frog, it was really cute. I think I really liked the, the cuteness of just having a regular story. It did have some fluff in it, but it wasn't too bad. It was just kind of I guess all my stuff is pretty, pretty wholesome and stuff. I guess all my stuff is pretty wholesome and stuff. It's a very fun sentence. Very repetitive. So this, co uh, this Sakura Pigma Micron is actually in a brown. You can't tell from the way I'm doing everything, but it is in a brown. So, um... 
it definitely definitely isn't fully oh did I ruin it already sorry I'm testing it out at the bottom of the page to see if I broke the marker already I think probably here is better too. I guess there isn't a specific space at the bottom, but I just made it so that there's a space at the bottom. <laughs> oh, forgive me. Okay. And I think we can probably, oh, I have to think about this. Okay. I basically wanted a lot of shadowing. So I think that's what I'm trying to do to create some contrast here. Make it seem more understandable. I don't know if I'm doing something that is very possible. It might not be possible. Um, but I'm trying to do it anyways. I think probably with this one it would work better. Yeah, it does work better. Yeah. There you go. You get that dark line that you wanted. Well, that I wanted, I guess. Okay. And I think I'm just gonna darken the tail up. And I'm just gonna add a line to the outside. On this side of the face, just makes more sense. With this underside, because the light's coming from the other way. And there it goes. I think as well as this under part needs some too. I think the pants will just be black, I think. Maybe like a really dark color. Maybe that would work. Okay, so we have a good amount of um, extra line work that I've added just for, just for stuff. <laughs> to make it look better, I guess, to add some more contrast.
And I think now we're just gonna do a lot of erasing. So I think this is the part where we're just gonna do a bunch of erasing, understanding that the most of the light's coming from this side and there's a lot of, you know, contrast going on. Where we're trying to achieve that. So, as I anticipated, because I went a little too hard on the red, it's not coming out fully, but it's not a big problem. Most of this is going to be in a nice green. So I think this is the time where we can start choosing colors. Um, I've already dilly-dallied enough. Okay, time to choose colors. So. As we're going off of our reference, I believe we should end up using a bluish green because that's what it was kind of indicating. I'm seeing a maybe, let's see. I wonder if it would make more sense to have a G4 and then a, I don't know if that's a green, blue-green. Well, blue-green is over here. Blue-green is what I used recently, so it's not too far off. Okay, and then the pants will probably be the darkest, which will probably be, I don't know, let's go with a G7, a chromium green. Maybe that would make more sense, very dark green. And the, we have a chromium green for the pants. We have a brown for the, we have, yeah, toast and chamois for the bow. Um, we have a, we have probably eggshell and orange for the face um, with the black, black? Black, black, black. Yeah, black, black. We have black and, um, let's see. <laughs> okay, chromium green for the pants, which is the dark green. It's about here. Basically, it looks like a black. Um, we have the blue green, which probably is the BG6. That's really bright. Um, but now that I'm kind of looking at it, it kind of looks like more of like an emerald green rather than a, um... yeah, why does it kind of look like an emerald green? As I'm comparing it to the reference. It's like emerald green and then you get the, um, the darker tone, which will then be in the turquoise green or in this other one this is the darker green so I don't know let's 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 test test them out okay so I'll go with sometimes it's difficult to test all these out g1 where's my g1 g1 emerald green okay emerald greens here and then the its shadow will be the uh, bg1 or BG2. We'll pick and choose which shadow looks makes more sense. Um, so, and then this kind of does match when you're looking at this like emerald green. Um, we also have a vivid green, but I'm thinking I won't use too many greens on top of greens. Um, and then the area around it is just a grass green or the GY4, which is the um, yellow green which I don't see here. G maybe GY2? No, GY1 makes more sense. Okay, GY1 will be the pale green that we will be using as the grass color and perhaps all of the tiny little leaves around it. Um, let's swatch them, let's see, let's swatch them. All right. Okay. And we're basically gonna swatch them around our character. I could grab my cup. Eh, that's 
fine. It's fine. I'm gonna grab this. Okay. So, our decision was to use chromium green on the pants. So, chromium green is very deep, looks actually the perfect color for the pants. Um, I think we're, I can zoom out at this one. We're looking pretty good with that decision, not against it. Um, the orange for the little face, the orange parts of the face, um, maybe a little too orange, but it's just gonna be in one spot. So I don't think it'll be too bad. Yeah, we're just gonna go for it. Okay, then we have um, emerald green, which will be the top part of the outfit. Okay, that's pretty dark. And then the shadow will be the blue green. Okay, that's definitely shadow. And then this is the, <laughs> the lighter shadow. Well, that'll just disappear with the pants. That's definitely not what we wanted. Okay, so we're gonna scrap the emerald green idea because I wanted a nice contrast. If the pants are gonna be so dark, I kinda want the outfit to be light, kinda the top half to be lighter than the bottom half. So if G1 was a little too dark, maybe we should just go for a G2 and then go for the G1 will just be the shadow. So the this will be the shadow, the darker part of the top part. And then the G2, which is the vivid green, Why are you swatching like this? Okay, so that's... My brain is still thinking too dark. Okay, we're having issues. So if G2 is bright, so then maybe it's GY3. Maybe that'll help. So because I can't find any greens that I'm feeling very into, so maybe, maybe GY5 will be, will be good. Okay. This is the box I'm looking through. Okay, GY5 will be absinthe. Lighter, but still no cigar. Still, we're not headed there. Okay, so we're gonna go with a GY7. Let's see if this is light enough for me. Oh, I'm feeling much better. Actually, the green and then the GY7 actually look pretty good together with the green pants. It makes kind of sense. Um, any emerald color probably wouldn't, but yeah. So maybe it's GY4 and then GY5. So let's grab the GY4 and then also do a little bit of comparing. Do we have a GY4? Okay, so this will be the GY4. That looks a little too close. So we're kind of moving away from the blue greens that we originally had. Um, and so we had the vivid green, we compared it, but we end up not liking the blue greens that were available. So, I would say because of the set of colors that I have, I have a limited amount of colors that I can use. So I'm just gonna go for the GY4 and then the GY5. And then hopefully that'll give us a good combo. Um, the GY7 is just the lightest tone. That still makes sense to me. Um, so not too many problems there. At least I don't think so. Um, and we're gonna, again, I kind of ignore the pattern on the, the shirt, I think. I think I'm not in the mood to, to draw a full pattern. <laughs> so we're just gonna shade him out. Okay, I had the GY7. So unfortunately the blue green just was a little too dark for my taste. I wanted a light top garment, a darker bottom garment, 
Hopefully this will work out. I'm gonna put all of my stuff back in. The orange will stay. The orange is not offensive to me at this current moment. So yeah, all right. Oh, and did I say, I guess I said I would use a light green. I'll just use the other green, that's fine. Okay. And I think we used the toast. So this is gonna be the browns that we're gonna be using, which is toast. Oops. Chamois. A little bit darker. And then last but not least, eggshell. Very light, very light, but very useful. Okay. And the eyes will be green, the lighter of greens, so I think we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna try our best. And uh, yeah, if you guys can draw with me, we will get there. Okay, so we're gonna use the light green on the eyes first and use the light green on all of these little leaves that I've basically pinned out. This is the lightest green and it'll look great. And for the grass too. Won't be ignoring that. So if I had a, a lighter blue green, I would have used the lighter blue green. But because I didn't have the lighter blue, blah, blah, blah. because I didn't have the lighter blue green in the Ohuhu set, I kind of shifted into a more brighter yellow or green than the blue green that we're seeing in the outfit. Um, so now I'm just going to color the pants with this dark green that we got going on. And green is supposed to be a relaxing color, so I would say green is awesome. Speaking of green, maybe this is very superficial, but always during this time of year, there's the McDonald's, like, um, what was it? The Irish, like their mint Irishy drink, whatever it's called. It seems pretty, pretty interesting, I gotta say. Okay, so, um, I wonder if I've forgotten which color. Was this the pale green I used? Oh no, this was the bright green. This was definitely brighter than the other ones, but we already found a trio. Um, this did seem like the lighter green. Maybe it would match a bit better. See, I already chose what I wanted, so basically this would be the companion to the vivid green. But I think the vivid green would be a little too much, so I'm hoping that this kind of combo would work. If we mess up, we mess up. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay down this uh, yellow green, and this is a bit darker. There we go, we have the lighter green, and it's not that bad. It actually looks pretty contrasted among the other ones.
And by the other one, I mean the pants. Looks pretty good against the pants, I think. All we're doing is kind of just filling in the spots. And for this top area, um, I'm gonna just, actually I'm just gonna color it in. Maybe that would be better. Okay. These lighter areas, I'm gonna actually keep the light green. So I'm just gonna fill that in with the very light green. It actually didn't look like it worked out. <laughs> Maybe the darker green would have worked better. Um, yeah, it would have worked better. Okay. That's definitely okay. We can use the emerald actually. So the emerald green that we used before, which I think matches back to this emerald. Let's see. Yeah, that's the one. And then we have that one. So I'm just going to make the um, sleeves the darker emerald green. There we go. We have some darker sleeves. Maybe it would have been better to have a medium tone, but to my knowledge, this kind of looks like a medium tone. Not on camera, it looks much darker in camera. Um, but yeah, okay. So we're gonna use some toast. would probably be eggshell and um, the stems of the arrows would probably be brown and the entire thing would probably be in a darker brown maybe perhaps a sepia tone I'm adding this just willy-nilly I could swatch it too. Here. There we go. We got our brown. And probably our bow is going to be in this brown as toast as well. In this brown, brown, brown. Um, we have a emerald, so that probably means that we can make our, um, belt that color. If only I'd picked a different type, but it's okay. All right. I think that it did. Yeah, that just makes more sense. There we go. So we have all of our basic stuff planned out. I think we need to color the face and the cat for now. Okay, so our cat has an orange spot. Where did I put the orange? <laughs> oh, there it is. It was right in the cup of all the colors that I used. Okay, so we're gonna grab the orange and we're just gonna go on her left side. Okay, and then um, 
I'm gonna be using eggshell for her face and his face, her face, whichever counts, and as well on the top. And then we're just gonna be using the black. Um, so this will be a little daunting and I hope it works. I think it's black. Um, if not, I'm just gonna go in with the sepia at first and then we'll work our way backwards. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with sepia first since I'm feeling a little nervous about using black all of a sudden. And this will go all around the ear. And inside the ear, here too. And I believe the top of the head is probably in this orange. Okay. And we're probably gonna have some, maybe some orange for the nose. Okay, very nice. Um, and then we're gonna go in with the black and then hopefully we'll just blend it in with some of the brown. Okay, time to use the dark brown and I'm going to be using a Ohuhu marker to blend the brown out to the black and the black out to the brown. using our chamois to then make these little parts of the cat. Go through so they look better. Okay. And I think with the rest of the toast, I can kind of go under the neck and kind of under the mouth too, so we have a little bit of something. And then I can then use the toast to shade the um, outside of the hands. So that'll be done this way, kind of on the top of the thumb. And then from the side, we're just gonna cover most of the hand in the toast color. Um, with some eggshell. So we're just gonna blend it out with eggshell. And uh, then the tail, the tail. Okay, so there's orange on the, there's not usually orange in the middle. So there's orange in the middle. The white, the, the tip is usually white. Or at least that's what I remember. And then the back of the tail is in the black, but we're just gonna be using our brown to black this time. But yeah, if you ever feel kind of weird about using black all in one space, um, you can always blend it out with brown and it still looks kind of the same, just the same. I can't say it's just the same. Okay, so um, the uh, absinthe color needs to be in the shadow. It needs to have some shading. So what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna imagine some of the lighting. Some of the lighting just isn't happening here and I just need to imagine some of it. Um, so this is kind of what I'm doing with this part. I'm imagining some of the darkness and there will be a, there's going to be a lot of like guesses in the dark for this because I'm not entirely sure how it's going to look. Okay. So from what I know, it appears that underneath the arm is where the dark part of the fabric is. So we're going to go in with the absinthe 
underneath. This entire section is darker. So we're just gonna go that way. And we're just gonna leave this part. Not so much. Okay, so then the creases of the fabric here around the chest are also gonna be darker and then the ends of this longer fabric will also be darker. So this will help make the bottom of the fabric darker so it brings more attention up to the face. At least that's the hope that I'm trying to do here. Okay. And we're gonna go back in and do a lot of the extra line work as well, so. And this part of the shoulder as well. Um, we're also gonna be doing, let's see, like some under parts of some belts are in order of being, also so this part of the armpit as well, this section of the arm, but not fully. So we have like our spaces and stuff. Okay, so then also the bottom of the outfit will have some darkness as well, and the hand will be in the light. So we're just gonna keep one part of the outfit so on the outer edge lighter, because I'm imagining a different type of lighting that's being used at this current moment. And I don't wanna make this section of the outfit too light because then it'll conflict with how I want the hand to be seen and the hand to be illuminated. Okay. Not an expert on lighting, but I try to hope that I kind of know a little bit. Okay. So now that we have the bottom of the outfit a bit darker, we've colored in the spots that we want to color in. Um, and I don't think I've made all of the things that I want to do in the coloring part. So this part's dark. Oh, I needed to toast this part. Okay, so I'm using brown on orange because orange is basically um, just like a brighter version of brown. Brown can turn into yellow. Brown has basis in orange as well. Um, and then eggshell will go on the tip of the tail because using pure white is often something that people don't do. So we're gonna follow what they do. Okay, now time to line uh, it again, clean it up, and um, we're gonna use the black 03 this time. I think before I do that, I can use some, let me check, yeah, I can use this. Okay, so let's do a really nice line around our character. This is in the Tombow marker. All around. And this is going to be our thickest line. The thickest line goes on the outside. The thinner lines are on the inside. Okay. 
Okay, fully lined all the way around. Um, I am going to then grab this and clean up all of those lines because they do look a little rough right now. Oh, I did something completely wrong. <laughs> I lined the whisker. Where's my brain? Okay, so I'm going to go in and try to get that out um, with some white paint. So you're gonna see me do that. And then probably this color, this paper will be able to handle it because it's watercolor paper. Um, I won't try to bamboozle it too hardcore. And for the rest of it, we're just going to line all of the extra parts, but the thickest line is definitely going to be on the outside. Um, we're keeping to that. That will not change. And since I work in traditional, I often need to clean up my lines. Just, um, they end up just looking rough and unappealing if you don't. So that's why I tend to try to clean them up the best I can. And on the bottom, uh, we'll have the shadow as well as the here as well. And I probably should use eggshell on the tips of the ears. So I'm going to grab the eggshell one and just kind of dot it down on the ear parts. Um, I'll probably need to just put them in toast, I think. I think it's just a little too dark. They kind of just look a little too much. So. I'm just gonna go over them and toast. Maybe that would work better. Yeah, it works a little better for what we got going on. Okay, and I'm just gonna get the orange, pull it up to the ear. Okay, so the green, the absinthe will probably go on the top of the eyes. Okay, and... Let's see. 
And I think now we can do some highlighting, now that most of it's done. Um, I'm going to grab the light green and just fill in the areas that I feel like I've missed. Um, but most of them I've kind of got already, so it shouldn't be too bad. And with a... with a highlight. The highlighting pen that we're gonna grab from here. Um, let's see. There we go. I got it. I found it out. All right. So, we're going to highlight some parts, um, and also, I believe, I definitely didn't shade some of these areas, like the belts. I just realized I didn't do that. Okay, go ahead and do that if you wish. I just needed to do it real quick. Now time for the highlighting which is going to happen okay top part of the arm on the brooch I think that's what I wanted the line I think I wanted it to have it as well as the arrow I wanted the eyes on the top and then some nose detailing kind of around this part the kind of whiskers here and then the whiskers here which oh, i need to clean up as well as i think the edge of this too My poor liner is like freaking out. Okay, so I believe we've done almost everything. I just need to redo this area. Okay, so we've kind of combined our cat and our um, our little guy, our little kitty. I think he's super cute and I definitely want to um, keep. Okay, let's see. There we go. Makes more sense. That was a little bit too much of a blob. Um, yes, I wanted to erase that area. So we can do this. It's not hard. I'm gonna go grab some water. I'm gonna turn on the break time, but we're gonna grab some water and then we can kind of fix uh, an issue that I have because I accidentally lined his whisker and now it just looks like a something weird. Okay, break time. Okay, we're back. So, I brought in a glass of water because we're gonna be using a white gouache type thing. So these are one of the Kurisabe uh, watercolor slash gouache sets. Um, I used to use them before I delved into markers. Um, I don't yet feel comfortable using them, but I do use the white from time to time and I've grabbed a brush. You can use any type of brush and I'm just gonna dip the brush in water and put some of water and then just kind of stir around so I can get enough 
white on my little brush and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna cover it kind of like a white out sort of but uh, yeah I just want to cover it the best I can and it covers it mostly um, I do have to wait for it to dry but other than that that's how I kind of cover up small things that I don't necessarily like. Um, that'll probably take a couple of layers, but it's not too bad when you consider everything. So, yeah, our doodle, our hour and a half to two hour doodle today was this cat. Um, and I thought he looked super handsome, and that's why I wanted to draw him out um once the white kind of dries which should probably take a long time longer than i'm willing to wait for right now i'll end up using the um pigma micron brown and just adding whiskers on the other side too but the rest of it is pretty much done i've added all the darker lines the areas around it um and the little, little expressive leaves um he looks to my knowledge, like a calico cat who goes hunting. Um, so yeah, if you liked this, I can definitely um, do more. It was, I don't know, it was just really fun for me in general. So that's all I gotta say. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. I don't have anything else to kind of impart to you today. Stay safe, drink lots of water. Um, and hope you have a wonderful weekend all right if you have any questions please feel free to ask um i am available don't be afraid to ask me any questions or if you decide that you want some sort of um you know extra demonstration of knowledge i can totally do that too but yeah we're done with this guy uh i like him i'll 